controversial, contentious, tendentious. Several words I looked up in the thesaurus today. I'm predicting that several of my fellow hobbyists will vehemently disagree with the advice I'm about to give you in today's video. They may be right, but I still believe that on the whole, this is the best method. Salamat siang, my fellow and future reefers. Matthew here, your BRS beginner guru, coming at you this week with episode 34 in the beginner how-to guide for saltwater crams and reef tanks, how to drip acclimate fish and some inverts like shrimp, crab, and snails, but not corals. Definitely not corals because there are several extra steps you have to do, which we'll cover in a later video. There are several hobbyists out there who firmly believe that we shouldn't drip acclimate fish for reasons I will elucidate upon shortly. And I totally understand their point. But, I uh, yes, you knew there was going to be a but, but I've used this method for years and I still firmly believe it's the best method out there. But not only that, there are several big online retailers such as Live Aquarium, Saltwaterfish.com, Blue Zoo Aquatics, and even Petco that recommend a similar drip acclimation method. So for now, until proven otherwise, let me teach you how to drip acclimate fish. Why do we drip acclimate fish? The simple answer is because the water from your local fish store or from the container it was used to ship in has different water parameters than the water in your home aquarium. And if you just plop new fish into your quarantine tank, the differences in temperature, pH, and salinity can shock those fish, which leads to stress, and stress oftentimes leads to disease and death. So drip acclimation gives your fish time to adjust to the new water parameters in the quarantine tank. And you guys notice how I keep saying quarantine tank and not display tank? I'm trying to like subtly send you vibes. Well, I guess not so subtly now because I'm telling you, but I'm trying to subtly send you vibes saying, no, 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 you never place new fish into your display tank. You're only going to ever consider placing them into a quarantine tank. Please, please set up a quarantine tank. Don't put new fish into your display tank. It's just a bad idea. What about inverts such as snails, crabs, conch? and shrimp, well, they're even more sensitive, especially to salinity changes, so drip acclimation is super crucial for them. Should we drip acclimate fish? Okay, here comes the great debate, but I don't want to overplay it, and I actually hesitated even adding this section in because it might just confuse beginners. Those who say we shouldn't drip acclimate are still currently a small minority in this hobby. But I think you're going to see comments either in this video, on forums, or other videos where people will say that drip acclimation is a terrible thing to do, and I think you need to at least understand what they're saying and where they're coming from. But a quick disclaimer here, this really only applies to fish that you bought online and that had to be shipped to you. If you just went to your local fish store and just drove them straight home, then drip acclimation is a totally fine thing to do. When you purchase a fish online, the retailer is going to fill the bag partway with water and then fill the remaining portion of the bag with pure oxygen, thus giving the fish enough O2 to survive until it arrives at your house. During that shipping progress, the fish is going to breathe and excrete, which is going to increase the ammonia levels and the carbon dioxide levels inside that bag. Ammonia is super toxic to your fish, but as the fish breathe in that bag, the carbon dioxide level builds up, which lowers the pH, and a lower pH means that the ammonia remains in a non-toxic form. As soon as you open up the bag, the carbon dioxide is released and oxygen begins to flood in. That oxygen will raise the pH inside the bag. A rapid rise in the pH means that the previously non-toxic ammonia is changed into its toxic form and could very quickly damage the gill tissue on that fish, causing death. But how quickly the toxicity of the ammonia increases depends on a lot of factors, including how much ammonia was in the bag, how quickly the oxygen enters the water, and how quickly the pH rises. This is why you often hear that you should never add an air stone into this process, because the air stone will increase the surface agitation, which means that oxygen will get into the water quicker, which will increase the pH and increase the toxicity of the ammonia. But I would really love to see Ryan and Randy focus on this for a future BRS Investigate series so we can know once and for all whether drip acclimation is a good thing or not. But for now, the prevailing wisdom still says that the benefits of drip acclimation by far outweigh the possible side effects of ammonia toxicity. Okay, here we go. The nine steps. I 
I feel like I've been doing a lot of nine steps and I just don't like the number nine. So in the future, I'm gonna try to figure out how to add an extra step in there so we can get a nice even 10. But the first step in the drip acclimation process is to inspect the livestock. This step only applies if you purchase your fish online. So if you got it from a local fish store, just skip over to step two. Start by dimming the lights in the room before you open up the box. The fish have been in a completely black box for at least 24 hours. So if you open them up to a very bright room, it can stress them out. So just dimming those lights down before you open the box can really help reduce their stress. When you open the box, just make a mental note of the temperature. Does it seem overly hot? Does it seem overly cold? Pull out each bag and inspect the livestock to make sure not only is it alive, but that it looks healthy. If there is an extremely sick fish or a dead fish, stop what you're doing, take pictures immediately, and don't open the bag because an open bag signals to the online retailer that you may have, in fact, done something to kill the fish. If any of the fish are dead, take those pictures, put the fish back in the box, and immediately send an email to the retailer because oftentimes you have to send that email within the first hour of arrival if you want to get a refund. But hopefully everything will look great and you're going to move on to step two, temperature acclimation. Start by dimming or turning off the lights in your quarantine tank. But if you're saying, but Matthew, I don't know how to set up a quarantine tank, stay tuned because next episode we'll go over it. Then you want to float the bags in your tank, being careful not to cover up the weirs. I did this once with a tank that had a sump and all of the water from the sump kept filling up into the display tank, but none of it could go back down to the sump because I covered the weir. And luckily I got it before it flooded my house. So just make sure it's not blocking the weir or whatever sort of overflow filtration you have. Float the livestock for about 15 to 30 minutes. The goal here is to make the temperature inside the bag match the temperature inside your quarantine tank. Sometimes, unfortunately, the livestock just arrive in really bad shape. Maybe there was a delay in shipping or it was really hot or really cold outside. You can temperature acclimate those fish for a lot longer if you need to, because sometimes just increasing or decreasing the water inside of the bag can bring those fish back to life. Just an important note to Bene here, do not open the bag at all during this process. Remember, we wanna keep the carbon dioxide in that bag so the pH stays low. As soon as we open up that bag, we risk ammonia toxicity, which can kill the fish. Step number three, cut open the bag, empty the water and the livestock into a bucket. You will need to make sure either you have a small bucket or maybe even tilt the bucket on its side so that there's enough water in the bottom for the fish. A little trick I learned when cutting open the top of the bag, make sure the bag is in the bucket because as soon as you pierce the top of the bag, all of that air will come out of it and the bag will lose its shape and the bag could easily fall out of your hand and onto the floor and make a mess and maybe even injure the livestock. When you are pouring the water and the fish into the bucket, make sure you're doing it as close to the bottom of the bucket as possible. Doing it from up high could injure the fish as they hit the bottom of the bucket when you pour it in. Also, you need to make sure that the fish does not get caught in the bag. This happens all the time because the fish doesn't want to get poured out, so it can totally get stuck at the bottom of the bag, which can lead to a lot of stress and maybe even death. Well, everybody, that completes part A of the drip acclimation process, but stay tuned for next episode because we will go over steps four through nine and complete the entire drip acclimation process. As always, everybody, thank you for watching. Happy reefing. Be well. We'll see you next time.